All right, sorry for those technical difficulties, but we are recording now. Um, all right, so today we're going to be talking about the React Context API. Um, this is something we might have mentioned in passing. Um, this is going to be another one of those functional hooks that we're going to be using. So if we quickly go over to our Google, let's say Google uh, functional, I can type functional hooks React. I think we, we browsed this page before. Um, hooks at a glance. Is that the page? No, not one. It's introducing hooks. All right, so as we mentioned, that's not one either. Why am I failing at Google? Let's just go for use effects and use context. All right, hooks API references I wanted. Sorry, third time's charm. So we, we kind of take, took a look at what hooks exist out there. Um, again, there are a, a few, a uh, number of them. Um, but the three main ones that we want to make sure we have a good understanding on are use state, which we've been using a lot. Again, just to review, state values are those values that React is managing. They're internal to our components. We need to update them um, appropriately so that React can appropriately re refresh or re-render our components um, as needed. Um, use effect is something we introduced this week. Um, use effect is, um, for functional components, the way to handle lifecycle events. So again, we talked about, you know, a uh, component will be initially rendered or mounted. That is like when the component's coming into the world or being birthed into the world. Um, then a component during its lifetime will update, whether props are updating, states, values are updating, um, use effect can handle that too. And also when our component's about to be unmounted or dying off our um, application, uh, we use use effect to kind of do any cleanup work we need to do. So again, use effect handles component did mount, component did update and component will unmount all in one. So that's use effect again, very, very non-intuitive. Again, I prefer the class-based component methods where we actually have those methods I just mentioned, um, but use effects is another hook that we need to get familiar with because it is pretty important to know. The last one that we're gonna introduce today is use context. Um, this one isn't used as much as the other two, um, but it is, um, it is useful in, in certain cases when your applications get long, Larger uh, use context is going to be uh, very beneficial in certain cases. Um, the other, let's see, seven here are very, very seldomly used, but they can be useful. So we've talked about use ref like very much in passing. I know we not we did not give a proper induction to use ref, so I'm going to just leave, leave that to you guys to kind of dig into the documentation, understand use ref if you're curious. Again, some of these other ones might be beneficial in certain use cases. I personally don't know all of them. I've never used use reducer. Um, use callback. Again, I'm sure I could read the documentation, but I've never really had to use anything in this list um, too extensively. All right, so use context is our focus. Uh, we click on that and kind of read the documentation, um, but let's kind of go to our slides first. All right, so React Context API. Um, what is context within React? So as I kind of mentioned uh, already, uh, React Context, a context lets us pass around data um, across components without having to use props, right? So prop values are what have we been using so far where we wanna pass down certain values from a parent component down to a child component. That's where we use props, right? So hopefully we're all comfortable with props at this point. Um, if not, definitely ask questions. But again, the idea is a parent component has some data. Um, the child component needs that data. Well, when we render the child component, we add additional props and pass whatever values we want, wish to down to the child component. That's our usual flow of data from parent to child. Um, but context will kind of let us skip some of that wiring um, and still give us the same functionality. So we'll, we'll see this a little more in detail once we get into an example. Uh, the important thing I wanna mention is that context should be used on a limited basis. You don't wanna abuse it. You theoretically could just put all your prop values into a context and kind of have it work that way, but that is generally poor design. Um, again, that's not what context was created for. Um, the two main use cases for using context are that when multiple components within your application need access to the same data. So again, we've been building, you know, kind of small applications. I mean, new site is getting larger and larger as we iterate upon it. But again, it's still small scale compared to like production grade applications. When you have like, when you start having dozens, maybe hundreds of components, and a lot of them need the same exact data, instead of passing props down to every single component that needs the same data, let's say I want to pass you know, some string value um, down to every component that uh, needs it. Instead of doing that, I create a context object or a context, um, yeah, let's call it an object, a context object that 
any component that needs that particular piece of data, let's say in this case, it's a string value, can just reach into that context and say, all right, I need this value. This context exists. I'm just going to get it from the context. It's not going to rely to get that value through props. Um, another uh, common use case where you want to use context is when a far descendant component needs access to some data. Now, again, for our purposes, we haven't really had a real viable use case, I would say, where we have like 12 different levels of components, right? So I'm imagining a tree right now where the top level is app or app component. And then we have children under there, then children under those components, and then grandchildren, great, great, grandchildren, great, 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 grandchildren. We haven't had that design. But if you can visually imagine that tree, well, let's say your app component has a piece of data. It has a state value that a great, 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 great grandchild component needs access to the data and nothing in between cares about that data. Well, the common design that we can know is that the app will pass it down to its child, pass a value as a prop down to its child. Well, that child doesn't really need it, but it's gonna pass the prop it received as a prop down to its child um, and then continue that process until you get all the way to the bottom. Well, that can work, that's not really useful, right? Why are we passing props down between intermediate parents that don't even need access to that data? So that's another reason, another reason context might be useful where a great, 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 how many grades you want to add it, grandchild component can just reach into the context and get the data it wants um, that the, like the app would set the context and then the great, great, great grandchild would just use the context. Does that concept kind of make sense? Or we'll, we'll see a little bit more about this, but I just want to emphasize should be used on a limited basis. Don't, don't kind of go hog wild with content and say, hey, this is the greatest thing ever. I'm just going to use it for everything. Cool. Uh, any questions about introduction to context here? Why do we use this sparingly, Anker? Um, Again, it's just a design a, a design principle. Again, contexts are kind of like a global variable. If you want to loosely think of it that way, we don't want to just have global variables unnecessarily. It is the way I think about it. But yeah, good question. Um, all right. So, sorry, just a clarify. Sure. I might have missed a part. So this is essentially this is just children talking to children? Um, not quite. The, the parent yeah. still needs to be involved. So yes, we did talk about how child, like sibling components can't communicate with each other. Um, they still can't communicate with each other using context, but they, they have better access to data, I guess, is what I would say with that. But the parent still needs to be the provider of this context. So we'll see what a provider is uh, with, when we're setting up the context here. So. Um, I'm sorry, uh, just a quick follow on and maybe this will get covered, but does it mean that anytime context changes, every element that has access to that content re-renders? Um, good question. Every element that relies, that every co components render that relies on a context data value will re-render, yes. Thank you. It's yeah, it's just like props or state values if those change and the components render is going to change because of it, yes, then it, it will happen. All right, so um, luckily like creating context is not super complicated. There are a few steps we need to follow, but there's not too many steps. So let's look at the steps that we need to go through creating a React context. And I wanna mention you can create multiple contexts. You don't need just one context bubble. I imagine as a cloud just floating over my application's head that we can reach, reach into, you create multiple contexts based on what type of data you're trying to uh, keep for each context. Uh, but the three steps we need to do to create a React context, step one is create a context object. Um, after we create that context object, we need to set up a provider. Usually this is at your top level, so your app component will be the provider of the data. And then the third uh, step is that set up consumer components, one or many, um, as needed. So again, this is the idea that anyone that wants the data can um, be a consumer of the context. So we have a provider at the very top. Anyone that wants to consume data from the context can optionally do it. If they, if we have a component that doesn't care about the data, cool, it, it doesn't care. It's not gonna receive props unnecessarily in that case. Okay, let's uh, go through our steps here. So um, I'm gonna go over the syntax and then we're gonna go over an example. So I might go through these slides and come back to them. But let's look at the syntax of creating a context object. So the first thing we want to do is import um, create context, this method from React. So you need to import that. Second, and this is optional, 
as noted by the name. So you can provide an optional default value for your context object. Um, usually speaking, this is not a default value you're gonna see used in your application. It's used hypothetically if a provider is not found. Um, again, this isn't too critical to know, just know that you can optionally provide a default value for your context object. Um, lastly, you need to call the create context method that we imported or function. And then you can pass the optional default value. You don't have to, you can just leave that blank. And then you'll get a context object, object back from that method call. And then I guess, finally, you need to export your context out of this file. So usually you wanna nest your context into a separate file, much like how we create components in separate files and then export it out so you have access to it from any import. Is there a hand raise there? Yeah, I was just looking at the, it looks like the naming convention is to start with capital case since this is kind of more of a global type thing. Yeah, I, I think that, yeah, the convention that we use for components, I think we just use that for context. Yep, again, it's just a naming context, uh, uh, naming convention. I'm pretty sure you could use lowercase letters for context. It's not gonna, not gonna matter. But if it does, then uh, that'll be news to me. All right, so first step is we wanna create a context. Second step is we wanna set up a provider. So again, usually this can be at your top level. It does not have to be at your top level. Again, you might have like a, you know, a, a distant ancestor that is a central node, um, whatever. So we're just gonna go with app.js for our purposes. So here we need to import our context objects that we just created. So wherever you store that in your um, application uh, directories, you wanna import from there. And then you're going to add um, this kind of wrapped uh, wrapper around child components. Um, of course, I have a typo because what else is new? That should be component, whatever I had typed. All right, so um, again, the, the, whatever I've highlighted in yellow is the stuff we're gonna be adding um, to what we would normally see in our app.js. So, you know, in our render, we're probably gonna render some child components. We're gonna wrap that with our context. In this case, my context has a sub component called provider. So you do my context, whatever your na the name of your context was, dot provider, that's a fixed name. And then you wanna set a value. So in this case, we, the value is the property or the prop. In this case, value, we set that equal to what we want the initial value for that to be. Again, this is different than the default value that we spe specified in our context. That default value, as I mentioned, is probably not gonna be used um, for our purposes. Again, it, it's there for a reason, but you're not gonna really encounter that reason. So here, um, the value set here is going to be um, what is being provided by this context. So in this case, I have a string of called something. That is the, what the value is going to take on for this context. All right, and as always, we want to close out any opening tag or opening component tag. We need to close it with a closing tag. So um, this is probably not what we want. That should be like that, right? Um, so yeah, we need to close out our tags. Marco Robertson. Is that value, is that a required uh, um, data set yep. that, or is it required prop? It'll throw an error if we don't put it in there. Uh, that's a good question. We'll find out when we get to our example. It is okay. required um, for this functionality. I'm not sure if an error will pop up. I think in that case, I'm, I'm not gonna, yeah, I don't wanna wager a guess. So let's find out. I'll try omitting it and see what React tells us. Might yell at us, might be fine with it. We'll see, uh, but great question. All right, so that's the syntax you're setting up a, a provider. Again, this can be inner app.js for the most part. Um, just wrap our child components, whoever, whichever child components may want that data, that's what you wrap. Uh, all right, last thing is consumers. So a context consumer will be a child component. Um, in this case, you still need to import that my context object that you created. And then um, there's a few ways syntactically that we could consume it. Um, for your, in, within your render method, I guess this is for class-based components, but we don't have to do that. So let's just do return. Um, yeah. All right, so for when we're rendering our, in our JSX, uh, we just wrap whatever section might need that data, wrap it with a my context. Again, my context is the name you gave your context. That consumer, that's a reserved word. I don't know why I have so many typos here. I think, again, usually we don't code on Google Slides, we have an IDE. That's why I'm making all these syntactical errors here. But um, my context dot consumer, and then a closing tag, as always. Inside of here, um, the syntax might be kind of weird, but here we have an anonymous function 
that's taking in the value that you set in at the provider level. So my context value is going to be a variable that's gonna capture the context value. And then you're gonna be able to use that as you wish. So in this case, I have a function that's gonna be doing my rendering for me. It's going to take in that value and use it as, as, as it wants to. So in this case, the value here I set was in quotes, the string of something. So in this case, my context value is going to be um, set to something, that's that something string. And it can be passed for whatever rendering I want to do. All right, so again, definitely maybe a little foreign syntax, but nothing too crazy going on here, I don't think. Um, there are a few syntax, uh, syntactical options you have. Um, hopefully this isn't become confusing. We're gonna go through examples. So please bear with us. But if you're using functional based components, you have the option to use use context. So that is that hook that we were we just were talking about. So this is for functional components. Use context, you need to import it from React, just like you know you do with use state, use effect, and then you simply pass it your context object. That will spit out the, the value that the context is holding onto. So again, use context, pass it my context, because that's the name I gave my context. And then you want you'll get the return value. So in this case, you get the string something return stored into my context value. Okay, so this is for functional components. And then lastly, we do have class-based components. Again, I know we're not focusing on class-based components too often, but I just wanna talk about them because there's um, a different way you could do it with class-based components specifically. So for class-based components, again, hopefully the syntax isn't throwing you off. We have class, some component, some child component, extends component, and we always wanna extend the component from React. Um, when we're rendering something, um, we might have a function that returns a paragraph. In this case, we're using that this keyword dot context, right? So this again refers to the instance of the class, uh, much like self does in Python. And you just do dot context. That's a reserved word to dot context, and I'll give you the value that you are looking for. But in order for this to work, you need to at the after you define your class, you want to do that class name dot context type and set it equal to your context value. This allows you to use this.context. We do not do this step at the bottom. This.context will be null, most likely, or undefined, one of those. The limitation of doing it this way is that your child component can have at max one context that's referring to via this.context. Right? As I mentioned before, you can have multiple contexts in your application. Uh, but in this case, you're limiting this.context to only point to one uh, context value. You can still use the other syntax. So this syntax is valid for class based components. Functional based components, just when you're rendering, you could grab a particular context and get the data out of it. But for class based components, this um, paradigm only gives you access to one context via this context. All right, we don't have to focus on class based components too much. So if you don't want to pay attention to this slide, you're welcome to kind of just ignore it. We're not going to be dealing with class based components uh, today. Okay, so let's actually get to an example because, as always, I feel like examples serve better than just looking at slides. So I'm going to go to something that we've mopped up in our new site. So hopefully these components some, seem familiar to you because we've been working with them for like a week and a half now. But at the very top, we have our app component. And then we've created some child components. We have an app nav component that has our, our navigation for our sections. We might have a homepage link on there. Can we add, yesterday we added like an add article button um, to that app nav. But yeah, that is our app nav component. We also have our homepage, which currently just shows a list of every article that it gets from the server. And then we have uh, a section page component that it's kind of filters down based on the section that we clicked on, right? So we have opinion or world or business, whatever the section might be. And then we have, um, I guess, a grandchild component called article list. Article list is used both by homepage and section page. Again, hopefully you guys kind of remember what we mocked up. Um, do I have my code up here? Yeah. So if we dig into our components here, uh, let's find them, nope, pages. So homepage, if you remember, homepage is rendering an article list component. We just give it some article data or articles data, and then article list is gonna do the job for rendering it. Same thing with section page. We get, the, we get the articles a different way by a different fetch call, but at the end of the day, we wind up with some articles and just tell article lists, hey, render these articles. And this is a great example of why we create components in the first place. Um, so that homepage and section page don't have to reinvent the wheel or do the same thing twice. Article list does the same thing for both of those components. Uh, any questions on um, 
the organization of our components in new site. Okay, hopefully we are familiar with our new site project. So this is our setup here. Um, this was part of the stretch challenge, I think on Tuesday for new site four. So we're gonna be, um, I think I still need to implement that actually, because new site, the new site five provided code does not have that, but we'll um, hopefully get that easily done. Um, currently, um, I guess, yeah, currently, let, let me take a step back actually. So we're gonna make some code changes now. Um, I'm starting off with new site four starter code. That should have everything that was completed in new site, sorry, new site five starter code. That's gonna have everything that was completed in new site four. So if you guys um, want a frame of reference of what I'm using, that's uh, it's effectively completed new site four. If you remember from new site four, we added this search feature. So if I type in Nemo, we find articles that have Nemo in the, in the title. Um, where this is at right now is that only my homepage has a search functionality. My opinion, my section pages do not have the ability to search. So I'm gonna make a couple changes. Um, hopefully you guys can follow along. I want to kind of centralize that search feature so that my section pages can have the option to search. Um, I'm going to kind of, cheat is the wrong word, but I'm going to avoid using the API for searching um, just to kind of make this a little easier to handle and to optimize this so we're not making as many API calls. That was, I think, stretch challenge number two. Um, so to do this, currently I'm looking at my homepage or I want to be. My homepage is, is the one handling, has the UI for the search, and it's the only one that has the search capability. But now I want to extend that and centralize that somewhere else. I think my app nav is a great place to centralize that. So I'm going to take some of this out and put that into my app nav. Um, so app nav component is now going to have that search bar. Let's put it beneath the nav bar. So I'm gonna create maybe a nav section. Drop that in here. Nav bar will be on top of that. All right, so I created just a div called nav. So nav is a specialized or glorified div. It's just a div if you wanna uh, imagine that. So we have a nav, nav bar, let's have all this out. Okay, so nav bar and nav moved the search UI into that nav bar. So let's see how that looks. I'm probably gonna need to clean up some code here. So, all right, I think it should be fine. It's not going to work, but that's fine. We're gonna need handle search though to be kicked out of here and put into that app now. So again, this is kind of the stretch challenge from, um, what was it? New site four. So if you guys didn't get to it, uh, yeah, we'll cover it right now. So we removed the functionality eventually to, um, oh, right, forget my imports. Always easy to forget those. So homepage doesn't need it. And again, as always, if you guys have any questions about what I'm doing, please ask. I'm just relocating some things so that I can centralize the search feature in the app nav, since that is available both to my second page and to my home page. All right, compile it successfully. All right, cool. So notice it looks exactly the same, but now when I go to my home page, I still have the search bar. In addition to that, when I go to an opinion page, I still have the search bar because this is part of my app nav now. It's not part of the individual pages. Okay, but I did break some functionality now because my homepage, if you remember, what we had a title search as a state value in my homepage, but now we have, we're not providing that title here. That title is not coming from within those components. It's coming from elsewhere. Um, so let's make a couple changes here. I'm gonna change this to props.title search. So props.title search. Um, Props.titlesearch. I'm actually going to change this to uh, be filter word. Again, it's just a naming thing. Um, I'm just doing this because that's what I reference on my slides. So, okay. So now we've changed the state value to be a prop value, as in it's going to come from externally, not internally. So I'm going to delete that state value. I'm going to add in props um, as the first parameter. So that's what React is doing for us. Um, okay, I think that's all the changes we need to make here. Maybe I missed one or two, but we'll find out. So props will have filter word being passed down. Well, that's gotta come from our parent component, which is app.js. 
So app.js um, homepage now needs a prop value called filter word. That's going to be set to something, but not actually something. So not the literal something, but we need to give some word down to homepage. Well, where's that word coming from? Anyone have a, an idea of where we need to extract that word from? Let's go with Jason. Jason, do you have any ideas of how are we going to replace this literal something with actually what they typed into the search bar? So if I type, you know, donuts here, how do we, how do I get that value? Uh, yeah, error will do with that. Would be like the input value. Input value. I mean um, the input tag value. It's like input tag that value or something. I forgot yeah. what it was. So yeah, we we're going to extract extract the user's value from an input control. That is correct. But I guess even thinking a little higher than that. Um, so we need something here. Um, this is my app component. So the very top. We have we are rendering our homepage, and we want to pass down a filter word. Where are we going to get the value for that? What component is going to give us this value now? Will our app have that value here? Sorry, I might, I might have lost you guys there. So, um, is it coming from the homepage? Not anymore. So the homepage no longer has search capability. So if you remember, we just relocated that to our app nav. So looking at the top level, um, sorry, I, I'm sorry, a terrible question to ask because I was kind of shuffling code around, but here. Our app nav component is going to be is going to be actually giving us the filter word now because the UI just got moved into app nav, right? We just added um, the input ability into the app nav, so the app nav is going to be the one extracting the value from the user's input, and then it's going to be serving. It's going to be somehow going to give it back to our app component. So again, this is a paradigm we've seen before. We're just going to go through it, um, make sure we understand how to communicate from child to parent. So first thing I want to oh, do. Yeah. You can use a use or you can use a prop to pull the child, right? You could pull uh, child tags from the prop. Uh, say that again. Kevin. So uh, the parent can pull child tags from the prop. I don't know if you can get to state from that though. Uh, uh, you kind of lost me there, Kevin. So if you're suggesting we could use a prop in app nav to get the value out, that is yes and no. We don't use the prop directly, but the child uses the prop to pass back a value. Um, so in this case, app nav, we're gonna pass a prop down to it. Let's say um, set filter word, word. We're gonna pass it something, some function that's going to allow this child component to pass back a value to the parent component, in this case, app. Uh, app. So in this case, let's say handlers, uh, we'll call this, all right, I'm gonna do something a little different here. If you guys hate me for it or just lost, just yell at me and we'll talk about it. But I'm gonna create a state value here. So my parent component is now going to manage the state data. Because as we talked about, in this case, app nav needs to interact with that data and my homepage needs to interact with that data. Those are both sibling components. So we want to create a state value in the most common ancestor. So in this case, uh, my state value is going to be const filter word set filter word will be the setting function. Again, if I'm going too, quick, too quickly, please let me know. I, I don't want to lose anyone here. But this is going to be a use state, which we're familiar with. Initial value will be empty string. Uh, we need to import use states. So let's not forget that. Import react. I don't know why we have react here. Use state. All right, so we have created a new state value at the app level because that is their cent like the central place that both homepage and app nav should have access to. Um, here, as my set filter word, or let's call it update filter word, just distinguish it. I'm going to pass it this setter. Usually, this isn't seen very often, but all I want app nav to do is update filter word. So I'm going to pass this set state function down as a prop. That's totally valid. Like. I don't see any reason we can't do that. So now I've created a prop value called update filter word, which is going to point to a function. So if I go to app nav, we, we added um, the UI here. So the UI is an input, um, and that's an on change handler. So anytime they type something, it's going to call handle search. Handle search is what we copied over from the homepage, put it back, or put it into the app nav. This simply as Jason was mentioning, we want to extract the value 
um, from the input doing dot value. So we get the new title that they're looking for. And in this case, the prop value is props that update update filter word, right? We're passing down a function called update filter word that's coming in from the props. So let's make sure we're taking in props here. Yes, we are. And then this is gonna allow our child component to pass back some value. In this case, it's gonna be a new title search. It's gonna pass it upwards to its parent. So again, this is the paradigm where a parent passes down a function via a prop and the child can use that function to pass a value back to the parent effectively. I'm going to pause here to let you guys digest that and ask any questions that you guys have. Can you kind of just repeat like the last, kind of what that last blurb you just said? Yeah, so uh, just to kind of just go back to um, just our React concept. So we have the ability for parent components to talk to child components via props, right? So parent, if it wants to pass down any value to a child, it can do so easily by doing a prop, a prop pass down. So looking at app.js. So here we are passing down a prop value. In this case, it's called update filter word. Um, for homepage, we're passing down a prop value of filter world word. Again, the parent can easily pass down values just using props. Um, child components don't have an easy access to just like reverse props, right? There's nothing called reverse props where the child can say, hey, parents, I'm going to pass you back something automatically. That doesn't exist in the React design. So to achieve that, where child components can pass values upwards to its parents, we pass down a prop that is a function. So this is a function we're passing down. And then the child component can use a function to pass a value back, right? Because a function can take a parameter, take multiple parameters, right? If I had a function called, you know, give me stuff, so I could take A, B, C, you can take as many parameters as we want. So you pass give me stuff down um, as, a, as a prop to any child component, that child component can pass back three values and then we can use them here as we wish, right? In this case, I'm kind of just not creating a middleman. I'm just using the set filter word set state, state function and passing that as my prop function. And now app nav is going to use it to pass back the title search, which will, if we connect the wires, is going to update filter word. So the state value filter word will be updated by that call. Now that filter word gets updated, well, homepage will automatically get that new filter word. So instead of something here, we're going to pass down filter word, the new state value that we have created in app. Filter, filter. That's what I get for talking and typing filter word. All right, now with all the changes we made, we should have our, our functionality returned back to the homepage. The homepage should still have the search functionality because we are now getting filter word from AppNav. AppNav is passing it to the parent. The parent is passing it down to the homepage. So we look at homepage, what was it before? Now we're getting the filter word from props. So that should do the same thing it was doing before. You guys cool? Cool, cool, cool. Okie dokes. Um, if I save this, let's make sure our homepage filtering still works. So if I search for Nemo, okay, search still works. It's as if nothing has changed. We did refactor code, but nothing's changed. But now the question you might have is, Encore, why did you waste the last 20 minutes of my life refactoring this if we didn't change anything? Well, yes, we didn't change functionality yet, but now we have more capability. So that capability is our section pages now has the option of the search also. So if I go to my app, now for my section pages, I could also pass down a filter word and that can be used by my section pages. Okay, I'm going to kind of expedite this a little bit. So section page now has ability to have a filter word. And if we look at section page, well, the API call is gonna get a little complicated because right now we're using filter articles by section. But now we want to do something similar to the homepage where they are fetching articles by title. But that's not going to work so easily. It is possible. But I'm going to tell you I'm not going to deal with it. So my API calls right here. If you remember, filter articles by section uses a section filter. Filter articles by title uses a different title filter. We could combine these into a single filter, but I'm not going to do that because I just don't want to do that right now. Uh, but do you guys get the idea of if you still wanted to use the API to get filtering working with sections, you need to combine the section filter with the title filter and then send that combined filter um, to your URL. Question, comment. So again, filter, we do question mark filter. This where 
the filters here will be a combination of section and title combined into one. So we could do that, but I'm going to do a bonus uh, stre stretch goal from new site four, which is I don't want the API doing the filtering for me. I'm gonna do it myself. One, it's more efficient because competing values and doing filtering on your client side is cheaper than calling the API 500,000 times as a user is requesting new search terms. Guillermo. So you're saying if we actually implemented that functionality, if we're on the home page and we search Nemo, we get four articles. But if we press business and Nemo still is the search word, then I'm going to get just the one Nemo business article. Um, yes, I think that's okay. the end goal here. That is sweet. OK, uh, actually, I'm not sure if that will work, but we'll, we'll test that. So my goal here, I'm going to go back to my diagram here. So Looking at our diagram here, the key thing here is that article list is the actual component that's showing our article teasers. Home page is not showing it. Section page is not directly showing it. They're both relying on article list. So this is my idea of maybe let's centralize article list to do the filtering for us. So in our diagram now, from what the changes we've made, app nav now is providing filter word. That's the source of our data. That's passing it up through to app via that prop function. And now app is passing down filter word to home page and section page. I'm going to have that prop additionally passed down to article page. So both home page, section page are going to take filter word and pass it down to article list. So let's make that change here. Um, so let's go to home page. So instead of home page taking in filter word, I'm going to undo all this. And now we're just going to do what I what I undo. Data should just be. All right, so now we're gonna filter, we're gonna get every article for homepage, just like before. There's no filtering going on here anymore. We still have the prop value, but that prop value I wanna pass down to here. So filter word down to my article list. It's gonna be a new prop that I'm passing down. And that's simply gonna be the props that my parent gave me. In this case, it's filter word, All right? So this is our homepage accepting props from its, uh, prop value from its parent called filter word. And it's passing that down further as another prop down to article list. So again, we have two levels of now filter word being handed down from app to homepage and homepage handing it down the article list. We're going to do the same thing for our section page. So section page now has a prop value that we're passing down. We're just going to pass that down to article list, right? So again, article list is going to handle the filtering for us. Any questions on what we mocked up? So the changes I just made have accomplished this diagram where app is taking in filter word from app nav. It's passing that down as a prop to homepage and a prop to section page. Both of those are simply forwarding that prop down to article list. Remind me what you removed in app.js just now. In app, I did not remove anything in app.js. I removed something in homepage. So homepage for the use effect, we had a conditional statement saying, if there was a title, like a filter title or filter word in there, we needed to call a different API. We were calling fetch articles by title in homepage, but we had a title to search for. Um, I removed that from here. So now we're back to just getting every single article. No filtering is being applied right now. Cool. Um, OK, so we've mocked up this diagram now. Every, all the changes we just spent the last 20 minutes doing have gotten us to this point. All right, so let's get article list doing our filtering for us. And again, this is stretch challenge, I think number two from our, our um, new site four, where we're not relying on the API doing filtering because it's inefficient. We're making too many API calls. If the user's typing in like a long word, every single character is gonna make another API call to the uh, server. That is not good design. Um, so let's go down to our article list and see how we get filtering working for us. So here, um, article list takes in Props.articles, which is all the articles that was passed down to it, simply does a map and renders um, an article teaser for each article in there. Now we need to do some, some filtering here. So I'm going to add um, a function. Let's say let's call it const get articles render. I don't know what to call it. Um, this is going to be a function, that arrow function. This is going to use props.articles. That's going to be our baseline. Um, I guess we'll still do a map. No, we want to do a filter. Filter. This is another uh, 
array function. Again, we, 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 weren't, we were clear about this. Make sure you understand your array functions. Map is one of the functions we're using where we iterate over every single, um, every single item in our list and just return something else for a new list or a new array, sorry. Um, filter um, does something similar. So let me think about this. Let's do, let's do a map. So map, let me just copy everything we have here, sorry. Copy that, put that into my function. I'm going to call this function here. So get articles rendered. And that's going to return, let's see, let's elements equal that. And then we want to return elements. That's what I want. All right, so nothing should have changed now. Let me make sure I didn't break anything. <clears throat> All right, so this looks fine. We're still seeing our article list rendering everything we want to. Um, cool. But I don't want to return every single article. So let's do for uh, let filter. Let me know if this confuses you guys. I'm going to chain on a filter here. It's going to take in an article. And I don't care about index. So article we pass. So now I actually want to do my filtering here. So keep in mind that props now has access to filter word. So if I do um, return article dot title dot includes, I did not put contains today. I did that three times yesterday, includes um, props dot filter word. All right, so a lot going on here. Let me kind of break it down just so we kind of understand. Um, LMs is going to be an array that we're creating, a new array that's going to be based on. So let's do it chunk by chunk. The first map here, so this map is doing one thing. It is creating, um, sorry, it's not going to work. Um, sorry, let me take a detour here. So I want to filter first and then map. I'm going to switch these. Okay, so we're filtering first and then mapping over. So dot map. All right, so why did I make that change? Well, first we wanna go through every article that was passed down. We want to filter and only get a collection that has articles that have a title that match the filter word. So we probably wanna do a conditional here if props dot filter word is not equal to empty string or that. So if we have if they if we have no filter word, then we're just going to return everything. So that, that's going to evaluate to true. So if you remember our short circuiting for an or statement. If the first part is true, we don't need to even check the second part. Um, why is this not happy with me? All right, we'll, we'll see what that error is. Um, but yeah, so this filter is going to, if we have a filter word, check every title and only return elements from that array back to the result array of dot filter. We're going to take that new array that's filtered down with only articles that have the appropriate title and then map over it and create um, article teaser elements from it. So that LM should be a filtered down list if we have a filter word. I know that's a lot to process. Um, again, using these array functions, if you've not used them before, they can be kind of intimidating but it is something that you guys are going to have to understand. They are very useful within React. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm a little confused on a line 11 with the return statement. Um, is the return, the return is, that's just returning that from filter and then map is picking up that returned filter? Yes, um, okay. close, close. So filter is going to return an array. So this is gonna do everything for each item and then return a full array. So let's actually break this down into two, into two parts because um, I'm trying to be kind of elegant here, but I don't want to confuse you guys. So let's do, let's do filtered, filtered articles. That's going to be return of filter. And then we could take um, the return of that will be filtered articles dot map. So I just broke this up. It's probably clear this way where first we filter that gives us an array based on the original um, array, which was props articles. And then after that, we're going to map over the filtered items and give us only the, um, the article teasers for those, those articles that exist. 
All right, so same thing I'm doing here. I just broke down into two individual steps. Probably better that way. Um, let's check if this actually works. Nope, I got nothing here. Um, okay, I do have Nemo here. Oh, I know what the issue is. So I only have three articles here for Nemo. If you remember, there was a capital N for Nemo. So I'm going to need to do something. Um, let's do two lower. I don't know if this is cheating, but there's probably a better way to do this. You do case insensitive searching, I bet. But I'm just going to do it the easiest way that I know how right now. Two lower case. So I'm just gonna make everything lowercase so that I don't have any issues matching it. Um, Cause we're assuming that the search is case insensitive. So includes filter lower, filter word lower. All right, so I think we're good now. This should be fine. Um, all right, let's take a look. So we have four, yep, there we go. So which one had a capital N? This one, last one, capital N, now we are grabbing that one with our search here. So if I delete my search, we're taking back to every article. Okay, so just to reiterate what we just did here, we've taken the filtering away from the server side, and we're doing the filtering locally on the client side. Again, this is more efficient because it's much easier for us to do an algorithm that filters on the client side rather than making an API call for every single time we wanna search for something. Because we have the master list of articles and we're just gonna filter it down based on the filter. So, um, that seems like it's working. Let's see if the section pages now allows us to filter. So let's go to opinion. Opinion has only five articles initially. Let's filter on this word, Delore. Let's try to do that, that. I'm not sure if it'll work. D O. Okay, we cut that down. Looks like there's two Delore, so that's even better. All right, cool. So notice we only filtered down only the opinion articles down for Delore. There might be more. Like, let's see if there's actually more here. Delore. Yeah, there's a bunch of articles that have Delore in it. I don't know Latin, so I don't know what that stands for, but it looks like it's a common word. So on our homepage, there's like, what, nine, 10 articles that are filtered down. If I switch my opinion page, notice that we only have two articles. So you can remember to answer your question. Yeah, the filter stays live as we go between pages. That's cool. All right, and then if I delete, we should get back only the opinion articles. We don't want every article. So, you know, that's five articles here. Cool. So after going through all this, hopefully this is a good, good, um, good example of that stress challenge from New Site 4. But we were talking about context. We kind of got off the context train. Let's actually get back on the context train. So the whole reason for going through this was we mocked up this diagram. If you remember, one of the key use cases for using context is where you get into a situation like this, where here homepage and section page don't really care about filter word that's being passed down. They're just acting as middlemen that are taking a handoff and handing it off to its child. This, again, this isn't the worst thing because it's only one level, but in, use your imagination. Imagine we have like 12 levels of components where the very bottom one only wanted the, only wanted filter, filter word, everything in between was passing it down, right? Taking it from app, passing down 12 levels until we get to article list. Well, that's a great use case for context. So we take this diagram, let's introduce how to use, or what context is gonna do for us. So here, instead of having all that pass down, so again, two levels, 12 levels, how many levels we had, now we create this bubble, effectively, or this cloud where app is going to take in filter word as, as the data. It's gonna populate our filter context with the filter word. So now this filter word is gonna just hang out in this bubble or this cloud that just exists out in some magical space. Now, anyone that wants to use this context and wants filter word, can just grab it from it directly. So article list can just reach into this context that got created and get that filter word because it wants it. Homepage and section page, don't care. They're not dealing with filter word at all anymore. Notice that there's no connection for filter word between app and homepage and section page. App just simply passes filter word into the context and article list can reach into that context and grab it. It's the same functionality, just a slightly better design because homepage and section page are agnostic to filter word. They don't care about filter word at all. Michael Robertson? Uh, does the context have to be created by the parent? So it, it, like we couldn't create a context by writing code into AppNav. Correct, yeah, AppNav is actually okay. not creating the filter context object, it's just populating it. We okay, simply so need to create it as developers to have like that cloud existing out there. App right, is so going to be the to... provider of the data and article list is gonna be the consumer of that data. 
So the provider of the data and the context has to be a parent of yes. whoever consumes it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. You got it. Well put. Exactly, exactly. You said it. So now let's kind of implement this. Um, luckily, it's not going to take too long. I know we're running to lunch time, but uh, it's just going to be following those three steps that we talked about. Let's go through those three steps again. So these are the three steps we're going to do to create a React context. First, create a context object. So here, I'm going to follow something like this. Let's go to, back to our code. I'm going to my source files. In here, I'm going to create a new folder. Again, this is optional, but for file organization sake, I'm going to create a folder called contexts. Again, optional, but um, suggested here. So this is going to create, I'm going to create a new file called filter context.js. That's going to be my new context object. Uh, we had a few things we need to do in this file. We need to import um, use context from React. Second thing, we have an optional default value. So I'm just going to go with empty string. Um, then we want to create our context objects. So that'll be font um, filter context equals use context default value empty string. And this default value doesn't really matter too much. Last thing I want to do is export. Now, let me make that clear. So let optional default value. I'm just doing this for a clarity standpoint. We don't have to this equals empty string. And that's going to be passed into use context. Finally, want to export default filter context out of here. So again, pretty simple to establish a context object. It's literally, what, three, four lines of code. I mean, the export doesn't really count. So, um, so we're using use context. All right, cool. That's step one. We accomplished this part, creating context. Step two, set up a provider. So this is going to be our app.js that's going to be providing data into the context. So to do that, we need to import my context. So let's go to app. Sorry for the background noise. Someone's vacuuming in the hall. All right, sorry, I just muted myself because there's a lot of background noise, uh, some vacuuming, but hopefully it'll be over soon. I'm just going to be adding my context provider here. So um, here, I'm importing my filter context. And now, as we talked about, we just need to wrap any child components that want to use that data. So in this case, I can kind of maybe pick, but I'm just going to be kind of lazy about it and just wrap my entire browser with the provider. Um, actually, let's say everything inside my browser. So here, I'm going to do filter context dot provider. Again, this is a reserved subcomponent dot provider. And I'm going to put this value and it's specifically a value prop. You do not have your liberty to name that what you want. It has to be named value. In this case, I'm going to pass filter word as the context value. So filter word goes into that. And as always, since we opened a tag up here, let's make sure we have appropriate closing tag. So here, here, I'm going to close out my filter context dot provider. Oops, let's look at that. It's angle brackets. That's why VS Code is not helping out. All right, so opening tag, closing tag. Why is this yelling at me? All right, I think it just took a while to. Um, all right, file successfully. So again, filter context dot provider provided the value. In this case, filter word is our value. So this is the part of our diagram where we are putting a value into the cloud. So app is taking what it got from app now and putting it into this cloud that we call filter, filter context. So filter word now exists in this cloud through the provider. All right, so that was step two where we um, su supplied a provider. Again, this is an app.js. And then step three, we need to consume the data. So I'm gonna use option number two for a functional component. I'm gonna use that use context hook, all right? So use context comes from React. So let's go down to, again, home page and section page no longer need props. So actually I need to delete those prop values. Um, this prop can go away, because again, we're not passing it down as prop. Also this prop down to section page gonna go away too. No more props or filter word. All right, so if I go down to home page, 
Um, again, we don't want props passing down here. So we're just getting rid of the handoffs here. So in home page, no more props for article list. Section page, same thing. Article list is no longer going to get a prop. Calls filter word. So just getting rid of those wires that are <clears throat> unnecessary. Um, but now going down to article list, which is in my components, article list. All right now, we still need, <coughs> excuse me, we still need filter word, right? But it's no longer being supplied via props. It's going to be supplied via a context. So to get the value out of the context, I need to import the context. Let's filter, uh, filter context. Uh, VS Code found it for me. So you just got to navigate to where your file is. Um, now that I have filter context here, I'm going to uh, get the value out of it by doing a const. Uh, let's see, uh, filter context value equals uh, use context and then pass in the context option. All right. So again, use context is the new hook that we're using that I did not, did not import here. So that is not bad. So import use context from React. I'll put that at the top. Um, okay, so we're using the use context hook. We are also importing the context object we created. Now we're using use context, pass in our context object. That's gonna spit out the value that is stored in that cloud. Um, one thing I, I want to emphasize, because I kind of did not mention it, you can store any type of value in the cloud. In this case, we're storing a string. You can store an array, you can store an object, you can store an integer, you can store anything you want. In this case, it's a string, but usually it's gonna be an array or an object. Objects are most applicable. We'll see that with new site six. But in this case, it's a string value that we're getting back. So filter context value. Let's actually just call that filter word. That's uh, kind of what we call in here. So filter word is going to be coming out of the context. Now we have access to it. So that's what we need to change. I guess in this case, let's use lower here. To create a variable. And I think that should be it. So again, Instead of passing on props, just go back to our diagram one last time. So context consumer, consumer is what we set up. So now instead of this wiring, right? Instead of having you know home page and section page dealing with filter word and just passing it down, we set up this via context. Where we have a magical cloud that has data that we want. Home page, section page don't care about it at all, but article list does care about it. So article list is going to be a consumer of filter context and grab the filter word out of that bubble or that cloud that we set up. Okay, dokes, let's make sure that now everything we did, hopefully we did not break functionality. So let's go back to, oops, we did break functionality, let's refresh. Ooh, that is not good. All right, um, technical difficulties. I'm just gonna kill my server and start it up again. I don't know if that'll fix it, but ahead. worth a try. If not, we got to read the error message a little closely and figure this out together. You guys got my back, right? On line 17, you have filter word lower as the name of the variable and also you're passing in the same thing. Um, that should be fine. So I'm creating a local variable from the, the context value that we extracted. So filter word is coming from the context. I'm converting it to a lowercase. Um, and then I'm just using that local variable in here. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. All right. So let's read this error because uh, I'm a little curious here. What just happened? Um, invalid hook call. Hooks can only be called inside of a body of a function component. Um, this could happen for one of the following reasons. Oh, I see the error. Uh, James, I don't know if you were going to mention it. Were you going to mention it? Yeah, we said it came to the conclusion at the same time. Yep. Create context if I want. Sorry, uh, that was my bad. I apologize. Create context is how you create the context. Use context is how you actually use the context, as the names would imply. My bad. Um, create context in our when we're in our filter context.js, we need to use create context. That is my fault, um, but create context will create our context for us as we would guess. Let's save that. And does that make React happy? There we go. All right, so we're back to, I think, functionality. Go to our homepage, we should have 40 articles. We should go to our opinion page, we should have five articles. Um, it seems like stuff's working right now. Let's try filtering. Filter on Nemo. You know, yep, we got four articles. Looks like that's working. Let's make sure our section page still works. Ah, that actually, oh, there's no Nemo articles, right? The lore, what was it? 
Delore, Delore. All right, so we go back to home, we'll filter on Delore, plural, there's four articles. Uh, without plural S, there's 10. You go to opinion, there's only two of those that satisfy that filter. All righty, so that takes care of a filter example and also some of the stretch goals we wanted from new site four. Um, again, just kind of understand the principles of using context. There are two main use cases, don't abuse it. One is um, if you have a, like a very distant component that just needs data from a very um, distant ancestors and you want to just pass down props to other components that pass those down as props and et cetera, like a waterfall, um, that's a good use case for creating context. The second use case for context is where a, a lot of components inside your application need access to the same data. At that point, it's a design decision like, why am I passing down this data value to every single component as a prop? Why not just create a context and anyone that wants the data value can just have access to it? So again, um, definitely some good use cases for context that you might run into. We will see context again when we're going through new site six after lunch. So stay tuned for that. Okay. What questions do you guys have about context before we take a break here? Michael Cheech. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, uh, it's actually Cheech, not that I mind. But, uh, that's that's all right. Um, rhymes with H, Cheech. Got um, Cheech, got it. Thank you. No problem. Um, does the context object, should we always create it in its own file? Is that, yes. okay. And can we, if we have more than one context file or one context context object, do we normally put those in the same file? No. Or I would say, would each one would have their own file? Yeah, each one should get its own file. You could get away with putting it one file, but again, that's gonna break your modularity where if one component only wants one context and you're importing all of them, yeah, not the best. So yeah, generally speaking, each context should get its own file. But it's not a requirement um, for it to work. Um, awesome. And then, uh, and then, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, final yeah. question there is in app.js, you mentioned that you were getting quote unquote lazy by wrapping all of the components in the context. Um, it, what would have not been lazy? I, that's where I think I'm a little confused. Would it just be wrapping app nav or would it have just been doing routes? Yeah, it would be route. So app nav doesn't actually use the context at all. It provides a word, but it's not using the context. App.js is the one that's popular or providing the context. So yeah, in this case, we could get away with just wrapping homepage and section page because those are the only consumers of it. Um, I just did it at the very top level because it doesn't necessarily hurt. Um, so app nav theoretically could have access to the context, but now the way I've set up, app nav no longer has access to the context, but it doesn't need it. So yeah, I guess being less lazy and more precise, I would only wrap the only the child components that theoretically might want to consume it. So this should still work. Hopefully I didn't break anything. Uh, I guess I need to wrap routes. So I can't just wrap the routes individually. Uh, question, go ahead if anyone has a question. Okay, uh, one thing, last thing I wanna do here. Um, I think it was Guillermo, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Guillermo asked, what if, maybe it wasn't Guillermo, but someone asked, what if we didn't provide a value? Would React yell at us? Let's uh, find out. Well, make sure we didn't break anything yet. Sorry, I have a quick question. Instead of us using the update filter word down and then back up <laughs> with the, the app nav, could we, could we update the context from within can, can you update context from a lower level or does the provider the only one that can change Daddy. That's a great question. Um, I don't have a yes or no answer to it. I feel like it might be possible for AppNav to tap into that context and set a value in there, um, but I'm not sure if it's possible because App is the provider, it's the top level. So that's a great question. Um, I guess I'll leave that for self-exploratory, but I, I love that question. It's something I'm gonna investigate on my own. Um, all right, so we got this working, still works. Yep, there we go. Let's see if we don't provide a value, will React yell at us or will we be fine and just it will, will not work? Nope. Uh, uh, looks like it is working. It's just we're getting undefined because we did not provide a value. So again, just to maybe talk about one point that I kind of glazed over, I promise we'll get to lunch. Again, this optional default value is not being used right now. Um, it's only used when a provider doesn't exist. We do have a provider that exists in app. So a provider does exist right here. However, we're not providing a value. So value is undefined. So that's why it still works. It compiles, reacts is cool with it, 
But when we try to extract the value out of here, we get undefined and we're trying to do stuff with that undefined word, in this case, calling two lowercase, according to issues. So it looks like value technically is optional, but for the most part, it's just for our use cases, just always provide it because that's why we're creating a provider in the first place. Okay, any last questions about context or what we did here with new site four, I guess? Okay, cool. Thanks uh, Thanks for sitting in with all that context stuff. Hopefully it makes sense what we're doing. Again, I just envision it. We're making the cloud out somewhere in our application that anyone can tap into when they so choose to. All right, so I'm gonna stop the recording here.